After Snake's body was taken over by Wrath, Mercy banished him to his realm of shadows. Kanan regained his composure after having been puppeteered around, and helped Xander escape the tomb by reopening the entrance. He invited Xander to stay in his vacation home in the neighborhood of Olidanese, in the Mulga province of Turkey. The air was warm, and the sun was bright. Xander absent-mindedly flicked Snake's purple lighter, on and off, as he stared out at the breathtaking view through the window of the bedroom Kanan assigned to him. What the hell am I supposed to do now, without you by my side? He breathed in, trying to keep his emotions at bay, as Mercy instructed. Whenever he was alone, that task became increasingly difficult. His memories he most enjoyed of Snake flooded his mind, and he missed his husband dearly. Suddenly, a warm, pleasant warmth radiated through his shoulder, and he felt okay for the first time in three days. My offer still stands when we defeat Wrath. As I said before, you've got your work cut out for you. Wrath is going to do everything in his power to take a hold of you, and your soul. Are you prepared to listen to what I say, even if he lies or tries to convince you that I am the enemy? Wait, but he said he didn't want my soul. His plans have changed a bit, but that doesn't change our goal. Now, answer my question. Will you trust me until the very end? Yeah, I'll trust you, Mercy, for the chance to see my husband again. Mercy opened her palm and placed it face up in front of Xander. Her hand began to glow, and within the ball of light that formed, he could see tall, white columns and crumbling ruins. Why are you showing me this? Wait, is that Didyma, the Temple of Apollo, here in Turkey? It is indeed. You have a keen eye. But why would Apollo's temple be important right now? You tell me. Xander thought for a moment and raked his brain for all the knowledge of Apollo he could remember. Greek gods were a hyperfixation of his. He closed his eyes. Apollo, one of Zeus's children and the god of crops and herds. I remember something about him relating to human guilt, the health of cities, and, uh... How could I forget about his lyre? He's also associated with music, dance, and poetry, but also... Um... Healing? Are you... Taking me to meet Apollo? If we can get a hold of him. We don't have an oracle available to help us, but... Perhaps I can lure him out with music. A distant ticking. Like the sound of a clock pulsed. Almost like a whisper from some place she couldn't see. I don't know what you're planning. But I know you're watching us, Wrath. He's listening to us, isn't he? Ignore him. That's the best thing we can do. For now, at least. The glowing ball of light grew exponentially, filling the room with a beautiful golden radiance. Suddenly, someone knocked on the locked door. Xander, I, I hope you're doing okay. It was Kanan. Just know if you ever need anything, I'm willing to talk. Despite the fact we don't know each other that well. I... I never wanted this to happen. It's my fault Snake was... consumed... I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around this whole gods and goddesses are actually real thing. No, Kanan. This isn't your fault. Xander thought to himself. He looked up at Mercy for permission to open the door and she nodded. Kanan stood, staring at Xander for a few moments, not expecting him to open the door for him. Who? Goddess of Mercy. Don't worry about what's happening right now. Xander placed his hand on Kanan's shoulder, a look of confidence in his eyes. Just know I'm working to fix this, and I have the gods good and bad watching over me. Is that supposed to make me feel less confused, or less guilty? If it makes you feel better, Mercy admits my husband's death was her mistake. Mercy peeked her head around the door, causing Kanan to fall back against the wall in shock. Hello, Mr. Osman. It's a pleasure. Xander is right. He's just helping me mend that mistake. Kanan didn't have the words, or the mind to understand why Mercy was in his spare bedroom. He simply stood and waved Xander off. Have fun, Xander. With the gods or whatever. I need a drink. <clears throat> okay, um... Stay safe while I'm gone? Mm-hmm. Xander, Wrath isn't going to wait forever to begin his trickery. We have work to do. He walked towards the massive ball of bright light and passed through onto the other side. He felt weird as the scenery around him changed from a vacation house to magnificent white columns stationed atop a square platform of ascending steps. 
Clusters of rubble scattered across the green grass and dusty ground, and a warm wind blew through the area. There were dozens of columns of all different sizes. Many looked as if they had been knocked down. There was a narrow rectangular archway that stood taller than every other column. The sun was just beginning to set, and in the distance, Anna could see vibrant purples and reds decorating the sky in layers. Whoa. I wish Snake could have seen this. He turned around, expecting to see Mercy, but the light portal was gone, and Mercy was nowhere to be seen. Mercy? This isn't funny! A high-pitched giggling came from within the ruins. He stepped forward cautiously and ascended the white steps. He peeked around the columns as he traveled deeper and deeper into the ruins. Although the area was small, the sheer amount of different directions he could take around the columns and walls were enough to make him believe the place was endless. I've heard so much about you. <laughs> you aren't Mercy. Where is she? Who are you? Who? Me? I'm just helping an old friend. Oh yeah? Can this friend control maggots and worms by any chance? And what if he can? Then I know why you're here. And I'm telling you now, I just want to see my husband again. If you let me go, I won't tell Wrath you failed to do whatever it is he asked you to do to me. Do we have a deal? Please, just say yes and leave. I know that's unrealistic, but do me a solid just this once. Now why would I do that when I can torment you instead? Well, shit. He ran through the ruins, slipped past columns, and suddenly couldn't find the exit. No matter which way he ran, there were always more and more columns. It seemed like all the broken columns had been replaced with brand new ones, and they were all the same size. Something weird was happening. What the? How is this even possible? The sky began to fade into darkness, filled with blinking eyes with red pupils, thousands and thousands of eyes. Eventually, Xander's knees gave out from exhaustion, and he collapsed and leant against a column. There were endless, narrow passages before him, and the illusions made him feel dizzy. And then the ticking started. His eyes began to droop and his heart pounded with fear. No, not now! Not like this! I have to stay awake! His eyes closed, and once again he found himself within that horrifying, lonely, dark nightmare realm. The ticking got louder and louder until he heard a chain fall from above, and that same light bulb from before buzzed to life. Xander laughed in sheer disbelief. Cut the theatrics, Cyclops! I know where I am! Wrath's raspy, demonic voice cackled somewhere in the distance as he slithered into the light, still harboring Snake's stolen body, which, in this shadow realm, was made entirely of squirreling maggots and worms. They protruded from his mouth and eye sockets in a horrifying, wriggling display. Xander, so nice of you to join us. Us? Snake spread his hand out to welcome a new figure into the light, a woman with rich brown skin and golden eyes. She had a crow-themed masquerade mask covering her nose and surrounding her eyes. It matched her black feather dress and long, straight black hair perfectly. Her nails were sharp as talons and painted silver. So you have friends now? Yes, Xander. Believe it or not, some people actually enjoy my company. You are an interesting mortal. Teaming up with Mercy when you could gain so much more power working with us. Aha! This is what I was warned you guys would pull, trying to make me change paths. Well, guess what? I'm not that easy to fool. Is that so? The void began to change. His vision darkened, he felt a wash of dizziness, and suddenly, Xander felt himself sitting in a field of lavender, and next to him sat Snake, uncorrupted by Wrath's infestation. Xander's face shifted with sorrow and love as Snake cupped his cheek with his olive-toned hand. He was smiling peacefully. Snake, are, are you okay? I'm so sorry I brought us to Turkey. If I hadn't accepted that invitation, we never would have... You never would have. <laughs> I forgive you. It's okay. I'm okay. We can both be okay together here in this beautiful field. Xander reached out to kiss his husband, but was cut off by Snake's voice once more. Xander, don't fall for it. 
He's trying to get you in a state of mind where you lose all sense of reality. He's trying to break you. Listen to me. Xander blinked his eyes, and within seconds he was back in the void, with his husband's maggot-infested face staring down at him. He scuttled back, escaping just before a maggot landed on him. It dropped and wriggled across the black space, making an echoing, unnerving squealing sound. You cruel, sick bastard. Tell me, is Snake's soul still here, in this realm? Not anymore. I released it a while ago. What? Why? <laughs> uh, to make room for your soul, silly! Xander's eyes widened in terror. He looked down and realized his body was in the Nightmare Realm, unlike last time. He was physically there. This can't be happening! This... this is insane! I thought you said my soul wasn't to your taste! It is... insane, but it is real. And Xander, we could give you godly abilities if you agree to help us. Your husband's soul was certainly delightful, but his body was weak. You, on the other hand, have potential. Help Wrath fulfill his destiny. Who are you again? The name's Apate. That makes a whole lot of sense. The God of Wrath and a Daimona of Deceit. You're a perfect match. We have been friends for hundreds of years. You could say we both strive for chaos. <laughs> With no other escape plan, Xander did the one thing he couldn't do before. He stood and began sprinting into the darkness, having no idea where he would end up. Aparte and Wrath just looked at each other, dumbfounded. Xander crashed into something cold and squishy. And when his gaze met familiar, blood-red eyes, he fell onto his knees. You're vile. You know that, right? Vile. Cold, bony fingers wrapped around his neck. He felt his body lift into the air and struggled, <laughs> clawing at the hand. But it was clamped down on his neck. He gasped for air, all the while Wrath laughed sadistically. This, this was way too easy. Mercy shackled me once. But she won't shackle me ever again. What's that sound? A golden arrow zipped by Xander's ear, and before anyone had time to react, it had already impaled Wrath straight through the chest. Maggots and worms splashed and squirmed away from Wrath's stolen body. Xander fell to the floor, trying to crawl away as fast as possible. A flock of ravens descended from the darkness and surrounded him, pecking and clawing at his exposed skin, while Aparte laughed with an amused smile. Birds started dropping, one by one, with golden arrows impaling their bodies as they dissolved into the darkness. Xander whipped around, and standing above him was the glowing figure of Apollo. He was tall, draped in red cloth and had golden shoulder armor. A golden quiver, filled with arrows, was attached by a strap to his back, and his wavy hair was a golden blonde, short at the front and medium length at the back. His eyes were forest green and angry. In his right hand, he pointed a golden crossbow down at Wrath's pinned figure. I would say that it's nice to see you after so long, Wrath, but it's not. He then turned his attention to Xander, who looked like a blushing schoolboy. All right, take my hand. I'm getting you out of this hellscape. Apollo held his hand out for Xander to take, and Xander didn't at all hesitate. The void swirled, and suddenly, they were back in the original ruins of Apollo's temple. The one in Turkey, not to be confused with the one in Greece. Waiting for them was a shame-filled figure of Mercy, who looked relieved that nothing terrible had happened to Xander. Thank you. I owe you one. Of course, Mercy. You've never done me wrong before, so I figured I'd help just this once. He gave her a flirtatious wink. Anyway, we need to get Xander out of here. Before Wrath comes back. I think he's going to be out of commission for at least... a day? I don't know how his regeneration works. He's a creepy guy. He shot Wrath in the chest. Ah. Well then. Now that we have you here, Apollo, we should talk in private. Great idea. But where? I can't exactly waltz into a coffee shop and expect people to not question why I look like... Well, why I look like me. <laughs> True. Hmm. Seeing as how Xander is used to entering strange dreamlike realms, why don't we talk in my domain? Not used to it, Mercy. 
and I never will be. Don't worry. My realm is much more pleasant. Mercy brought her palms to an upright position, and that same ball of golden light from before rose into the air and sparked into a dazzling portal. Xander's eyes reflected the clear, still tranquil waters within. Finally, peace and quiet. Listen, I love playing the lyre for my dad and singing with the muses, but sometimes I just need complete silence. You know what I mean? I have four brothers and a sister. I understand. Polo chuckled and pushed Xander through the portal. <laughs>